Good morning, everyone. It's time to go on the record. Barriers broken in the Suffolk County DA's office. Rachel Rollins takes the helm, promising an era of criminal reform. How aggressively will she pursue change? Mr. Trump, you took an oath just as I did five days ago. Sir, you dishonor that oath. Taking the passion of her campaign to the floor of the House, what Ayanna Presley's early days on Capitol Hill are telling us. A record number of new women in politics. Is there still a double standard, though? From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Very good morning to you, everyone. With Mr. Defiance political reporter, Jenny Wu, I'm Matt Harding. Thanks for joining us on the record this morning. And our guest is Rachel Rollins, a new Suffolk County District Attorney. She's the first woman of color to hold that position, one of the many historic stories to emerge from the 2018 election cycle. She's a Democrat. She's a graduate of UMass Amherst and Northeastern University Law School. She served as an assistant United States attorney and general counsel to MassDOT and the MBTA. She's also a breast cancer survivor. So great to have you with us this morning and Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Happy great to New have Year to you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. Um, so on the day that you were elected, many voters knew very little about you at that time, even after you won the primary and then you won the general election. Uh, but a lot of people knew one thing about you, which was that you uh, felt many crimes on the books that should not be prosecuted. Um, can you sort of summarize what you mean by that? Yes, of course. Uh, so first of all, thank you for having me here. Um, I believe that we can hold people accountable without having to send them to jail. I was very vocal pre-primary about the fact that I was going to look at crime differently than we had. I believe if we look over the last 16 years, Dan Conley did a very good job as the district attorney, but in those 16 years, let's think about what's changed in our lives. We've seen Uber, we've seen Airbnb mm -hmm. completely disrupt industries, mm -hmm. industries, and we are still prosecuting things in the same way we have in the you know 70s, 80s, and 90s. And what we're seeing nationally is data show that our tough on crime sort of uh, approach to things aren't netting the same results as we thought they were. So I said, with respect to low-level nonviolent crimes, give and, me one and or two be examples, specific, yeah. and I will yeah. be very specific. Yeah. So I have a list of 15. It's trespassing. It's shoplifting. Mm -hmm. It's larceny under 250. Mm -hmm. It's possession um, of of uh, of drugs. And I even went so far as to say possession with intent to distribute that a lot of non-lawyers don't understand. There's no weight associated with that. And it's not a distribution. It's an intent. Um, and what I said was in those 15 circumstances, and there are a few others, you know, uh, standalone resisting arrest charge, for example, or breaking and entering into a vacant property for the purpose of seeking shelter, um, that I don't believe people need to be in the first instance incarcerated for. Because overwhelmingly those crimes are crimes of poverty, mental illness and addiction. And what I think these people need is services, not sentences, but we're gonna look at each of these circumstances on a case-by-case -case basis and hopefully get them the treatment they need rather than costing taxpayers $55,000 a year to send them to Nashua Street mm -hmm. or the Suffolk County House mm -hmm. of Corrections. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in Massachusetts with marijuana being legal, possession even becomes a more Absolutely. Interesting moment. Very, of, very interesting moment. I mean, we, moving off of that, we have a lot of work to do with respect to marijuana and the, the, excellent assistant district attorneys in my office, for example, if you're operating a vehicle and you are um, have ingested cannabis, which is lawful, how are we to tell um, that you are uh, impaired? Mm -hmm. You know, we have breathalyzer tests with respect to alcohol. We now are deploying a specialist to determine whether somebody is under the influence of cannabis while they're driving. We have a lot of work we need to do in some of these so, areas and catch up so, with, with the innovation. So the obvious question of that might be, how do your comments sit with police officers? Yeah, so I think very candidly, there are some police that are upset about this, but many police will tell you that already these lifts of 15 in the first instance people aren't being incarcerated we have a great we had a great commissioner in commissioner evans we have a great commissioner in commissioner gross commissioner gross's statement is cuffs 
as a last resort, meaning handcuffs and arrest as a last resort. All I'm saying is with nonviolent or less serious crimes, incarceration as a last resort. In your inaugural, you made a point of looking at the commissioner and you said, I know that a lot of what I'm proposing is making a lot of folks nervous, but nervous is good. That's how we bring change. Have you had a chance to sit down and talk privately with Commissioner Gross? For sure. Um, so in addition to Commissioner Gross, and I want to make sure everyone listening knows this, Suffolk County is not just Boston. It's also Chelsea, Winthrop, and Revere. And mm -hmm. I made sure to be very respectful to the chiefs of those three other parts of Suffolk County. I have had personal conversations with each of those individuals. They are upstanding men. They are excellent at their jobs. And we are going to get on the same page. We might not agree on everything, but what I want is transparency. Transparency, and I want whether you are in West Roxbury or Roxbury for mm -hmm. you to be receiving the exact same treatment when you walk in with an opioid issue or you walk in with a mental health issue. Uh, can you say with confidence that after meeting with all these police chiefs that they are, quote, less nervous than before they met you? I, I personally, I mean, I believe they're less nervous because they've actually met me and I am no longer this, you know, mystery woman that allegedly is soft on crime is the words that they try to use on me. I'm smart on crime. And, and let me just finish if I, if I could. I've actually prosecuted cases before. I'm a former federal prosecutor. I have no problem with respect to violent and serious crimes, removing people from the community because that is my responsibility. But I think we send people away for too long and we don't do enough with them when they're gone. Do you think they agree with you as far as your list of uh, crimes that should not be prosecuted? I think they agree with many of the things on the list. I'll be very candid with you. I think resisting arrest is a standalone charge. They believe that's not respectful of law enforcement. And I'm going to sit down and listen to them. They also believe that possession with intent to distribute is something that might be a bit too far. But we, overwhelmingly, sir, these, these, these law enforcement um, professionals know that the opioid crisis is out of control and people who are struggling with substance use disorder need treatment. You, you were just talking about violent crimes and we're what? We're about halfway through January already and we've had a couple of murders in Boston and I, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Wednesday night on News Center 5, we had a woman crying, saying she can't sit in her own neighborhood because there are shots that are being fired in her own neighborhood. Uh, a, a Philadelphia DA suggested some first degree murder should be prosecuted as manslaughter or second degree. What is, do you have a read on that? Do you have a feeling on that? Yeah, I mean, so for that woman, she's absolutely right. She deserves to have a community heart -wrenching. that she lives in where she, her children and her can walk out and check their mail or play in the street and not be fearful of being shot or attacked. And our first responders in law enforcement have an incredibly tough job. I have deep, deep respect for them. We are going to be working at making sure that we are solving these crimes as quickly as possible, that we are holding people responsible, um, and I will be very active. Now, what I want you guys to know is with respect to homicides in Massachusetts, we are fortunate um, in, in, with respect to Suffolk County, I oversee all of the homicide investigations. So the district attorney runs from investigation to prosecution, everything, and I will be working very closely with Commissioner Gross on that. But to go to the original question, do you think there are some first degree murders that should be prosecuted Absolutely. as manslaughter and second degree, I, not first degree? I believe that what we need to do is look at everything as not a re, not like reflex um, as a reflex saying first degree, first degree, first degree. There are some circumstances where a second degree charge might be more appropriate. I fully agree with District Attorney Krasner as that. But I have full faith in, in Ed Zabin, who's my chief of homicide, um, and Mark Lee, who's his assistant. This office has exceptional lawyers in it that are making those decisions, and we're already doing that in, in many instances. Yeah, I understand the topic we're talking about. I want to change the mood dramatically and move to the OTR park, Oh, please. my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. We just asked you questions like that. You weren't nervous we asked about you that. About, no, knows about whammies. 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 Right. No, no whammies. No whammies. No whammies. No whammies. That right. shows my age. Let 47. Me see. Uh, there might be a whammy in here. Oh, I'm not my sure. God. All right. Um, the first one is, what vintage TV crime drama was actually set in Boston? I'll give you multiple choices. All okay. right. It's on the screen. Was it Mannix? Was it Ironside? Or was it Spencer for Hire? Spencer for Hire. Bingo, ding, ding. See, look <laughs> Come at that. Come on, get me <laughs> no, something hard. You're one for one. <laughs> oh, we're going to uh, get... No, 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 take that back. <laughs> I don't want anything. <laughs> at your swearing-in ceremony, you entered the room as Celebration by Cool and the Gang played. Name another hit by Cool and the Gang, and we'll give you a multiple choice on that. Of course, we have September, Get Down on It, 
Three times a lady. Uh, get down on it. <laughs> you want to hum a few bars as we go to and break? Get down on okay. it. <laughs> I love Cool on the Gang. They are great, they are great, a great group. Great I think group. this may be the first singing pop quiz. Uh, don't stop. Keep right on going. We'll be right back. No more.